You know, it's, it, it, we went so viral, but here's the, here's the problem, to be honest with you. She's out trending me. <laughs> and more. All right, if you get the anniversary date, they'll make up for it. Oh, God, he's never going to oh, get God. that either. February 3rd. 5th. <laughs> oh, what two. year? Sean, you're <laughs> never coming on this podcast again. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Digital Social Hour. Got some returning guests for you guys today. Gary Brecken, and Sage Workinger. How's it going, guys? Dude, it's going amazing, man. It's Thank great you to for be having back. us back. Absolutely. I mean, we went so viral the first time. We had to run it back. It's crazy. It, you know, it's, it, it, we went so viral, but here's the, here's the problem, to be honest with you. She's out trending me <laughs> and um, by like a million views, and, and it's really starting to bother me. Mm. I mean, it really was. It was becoming a competition, and I think I still have the biggest video if we're comparing ours you do now maybe you have more collectively views but, but i still video. have mm. there's that one it went like almost 10 million views or something yeah, yeah so i'm making like all these Instagram. fake accounts yeah. and i'm kind of like like one starring her shit oh that's you <laughs> that's you yeah. mastermind yeah okay you're like damon underscore two five four that's yeah me in the, get you on my feet every day yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's the latest in health hacks since we've last spoke Dude, there's Ooh. so many. I mean, I'm I'm still a huge fan of breath work, red light therapy, or natural sunlight grounding. Um, but you know, the field of of anti aging, longevity, biohacking is growing so fast, and now the science is finally catching up. Yeah, meaning we got real empirical data, like real evidence based, um, peer reviewed, published, you know, studies being done on human beings, and and I think post pandemic, people are a lot more receptive to wellness and mm. longevity and biohacking because th they realized that, that you know a giant farce was just perpetrated yeah. on them and they realized that, hey i gotta take i gotta take health into my own hands here right so you um, guys aren't getting as much hate not getting no. nearly as much hate. I, mean, <laughs> I still get shadow banned a lot if i talk about seed oils or the vaccine <laughs> i just stopped talking I just, about i those. just said the v word that's you yeah. just lost a million views right there cut, yeah. that, out. cut I, that out <laughs> i had to start censoring it for real yeah it's yeah, scary. people can be, uh, people are angry one way or the other. And it just, I think a lot of it has to do with what state did you, are you living in and what are they feeding you? Yeah. Because we live in Florida and I mean, we live in Naples, Florida. I think we went on lockdown for like two and a half weeks and then right. everybody was like, okay, that was good. So we're over it now. Yeah, Florida did it right. Yeah. They were like the only state. We were, yeah, <laughs> we really were, but we got a lot of You look at that it. fallout from this, it, it, it you know, it really, devastated a lot of immune systems because I have a saying that aging is the aggressive pursuit of comfort. And what I mean by that is that people are unwilling in a lot of cases to, to put themselves in a little bit of discomfort in order to strengthen themselves, strengthen themselves. And um, not all stress is bad for the body, right? I mean, we know if you don't load a bone, it won't strengthen. If you don't tear a muscle, it doesn't grow. If you don't challenge the immune system, it weakens. Yeah. And you're seeing the byproduct of a globally weakened immune system now, social distancing, residential quarantining, um, you know, masking. Human beings were really meant to be in the proximity of other human beings and exchange different pathogens and keep a strong immune system. So now there's all kinds of, I think we're in our eighth variant of Omicron and, <laughs> and um, mon monkey are... pox. I'm like, what the <laughs> monkey pox? The masks are coming back out. And the biggest thing that I learned from so many doctors that will actually speak out about it, masks don't work. Right. If anything, like what did they, one, one doctor, neuro uh, neurosurgeon told yep. us, six viruses can fit in the hole of every one of those blue masks well, I mean, that people I'm, are wearing. Well, and that's like a, a medical mask. That's not like the makeshift bandanas that people were starting to wear at one point. But it also can get through your tear ducts. So we can all pretend maybe it helps, maybe it helps if somebody's sneezing helmet. nearby, but ultimately yeah. masks were not created to prevent all of that. Well, we, we just went right, right off the cliff. There. Sorry, you right can cut that gate. part out too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're starting off strong oh, here. That, yeah, we're starting off strong. <laughs> that's gonna go viral, yeah. I'm gonna get so much 100%. We're gonna get censored, Sean's yeah. gonna disappear. <laughs> Sean, Sean's gonna hang himself Sorry, on the bed. You, you know, guys look hotel. better every time I see you, which oh, should be the you. opposite, right? But you're looking better. <laughs> yeah, you're feeling more. Especially energetic. with our travel schedule, it's I know. insane. This week we're like Miami, Vegas, yeah, oh, Miami, LA. Austin, Vegas, oh, Miami, LA, Austin. Dubai, all in a week. Yes, in a couple oh, my Miami, days. Austin, Vegas, LA, Dubai, mm -hmm. Abu Dhabi. That's Bahrain. insane. Yeah, 
Abu Dhabi. Yeah, we're traveling in the Middle East at like probably the worst time possible, but they yeah, say it's safe. That's scary. And yeah, I see you traveling with that. What's that water bottle I saw on your... So it's it's a hydrogen water filtration bottle. Yeah. Um, it, it's called an Echo. And, and essentially what it does is it adds hydrogen to the water. Okay. You know? And I think the best water that you can put in a human body is hydrogen water. I mean, there's lots of different types of water out there. Spring water, there's distilled water, there's, there's alkaline water. Um, you know, we sold a big marketing myth to the public that alkaline water could make the body alkaline, which mm -hmm. is patently false. It's, you know, it's buffered in the stomach. So... If you have a choice and you, you want to drink, you know, the, the best water, a, a reverse osmosis filter that re then adds hydrogen to the water mm -hmm. um, is arguably, the, you know, the best water ounce for ounce you can put in the human body. There's a whole class of uh, bacteria in our in our gut called hydrophiles. And, um, you know, it increases the absorption of nutrients. It increases the absorption of your supplements. It actually does have uh, electrons to donate. So it yeah. can actually change um the ph of the environment that it's in wow that's crazy because i drank alkaline water for years so it had no health benefits well it's not that it doesn't have any health benefits it's just that it's not going to make your you're not getting the alkaline benefit i mean the mm. fact that it's probably alkaline that it's alkaline means it was probably filtered so it doesn't have fluoride doesn't have chlorine okay. um you know very likely doesn't have microplastics and some of the other things that are in pharmaceuticals that are in water so from that standpoint it's excellent and you know the filter water is much better than tap water in fact tap water is probably the one of the top three things that I think people should worse. permanently get out of their life. Really? Right. If they take nothing else from this podcast today, um, other than the fact that you should permanently stop drinking tap water, I mean, <laughs> that will change the trajectory of their life. Yeah. My friends get it at restaurants and I don't want to be that guy, but I got to tell them sometimes. Yeah. Right? You're like, <laughs> just get the bottled water, please. Yeah. yeah. It's the fluoride mainly. That's the concern there. Yeah. It's the fluoride. I mean, I, I, I did a big um, expose on fluoride, but you know, essentially one of the largest studies ever um, published recently was um, actually extracted from the CDC after, after a lawsuit and they made public the municipal water, um, quality study, which essentially, I think they studied 35 or 3,600 different municipalities in the United States, and they found a direct inverse correlation between the increase of fluoride in the water and the decrease in IQ. Whoa. Especially in prepubescent teens. That's Jeez. crazy. So for children, it's even more devastating because of the developmental cycle of the brain. You know, the brain's really neuroplastic in those young prepubescent years. Man. And fluoride's a neuroto neurotoxin. And now they're even challenging the, um, you know, the premise that it prevents tooth decay because of the very, very micro thin layer of protection that it gives to enamel. But if the trade off is that you've got to take a neurotoxin to prevent prevent tooth decay um it's not that's not a really a reasonable it's not worth trade-off so um, what do you guys use to brush your teeth um we use we we have a filtration system in the house so it filters all the water in the house mm -hmm. um or we'll use there's under-the-counter filtration systems that you can use i mean brushing your teeth um you can get with, a non-fluoride toothpaste too right. we yeah, usually it, go with some sort of organic version if because we're not doing crest or any of that in yeah. colgate anymore <laughs> right. I mean, fluorophyte tooth toothpaste are excellent for brushing your teeth, but um, you know, the little bit of tap water that you would probably not ingest and spit out to brush your teeth isn't isn't the isn't the risk. It's the heavy amount of ingestion. If you look on the back of most toothpaste labels that contain fluoride, right on the label it says if you swallow it to contact poison control, mm -hmm. and the amount that you swallow is a fraction of the amount of fluoride that you would ingest in a day's worth of, you know, uh, six glasses of eight six eight ounce glasses of water in a yeah. day. So. But they don't tell you to call poison control at the end of the day if you drink tap water. No. Um, <laughs> tell you to Man. call poison control if you swallow That's fluoride. scary. Will it's, normal filters filter out the fluoride? Um, yeah, if, if it's a fluoride filter. I mean, that's usually the first thing they filter out is fluoride, yeah. chlorine. And then depending on the microns in the filter, you get down to everything else. Microplastics, it takes a very good filter to filter out uh, the pharmaceutical compounds. But if... Uh, reverse osmosis, RO filter, mm -hmm. is excellent for that. There are usually four stages to that. So by the time the water's passed through those four stages, you know, it's pretty, pretty clean. That's good. And, I, and I talk about this a lot. It's, it's, there's so much fear mongering, I think, out there on social media that you have to be careful just to say, this is going to you and that's going to you and this is a neurotoxin and that's a carcinogen. <laughs> but the truth is simple changes make demonstrative shifts in the trajectory of your life and one of them is getting tap water out of your life yeah it's so crazy though because everyone drank it growing up right literally right. everyone 
it was yep. normal. Why would you think it was something that the city provides? Why would you think that it wasn't okay for you to drink? Right. There was. Of course, I mean, you think it's okay. You know, we don't. You can't make a direct causal link, right? Like we can't directly link, directly link to autism. We can't. We can link it to autism in certain cases, but the rise in autism. But if you look at like the, the progression of chronic disease, mm -hmm. one of them is autism. You know, in the '60s, one in five thousand children had autism. Right. Um, I mean, I was born in 1970. She was born in 1978. What's my birthday? Ooh. Um, <laughs> Nine years Aren't together, really? Sean, and this he's Just do that? he's gonna get it now, but only because we had this conversation in the car, <laughs> and he sent it to someone. I and actually it was text, wrong. I actually texted. We we're getting Nine some years. testing done. Uh, and I, <laughs> Nine years. I, I texted. I texted them her birth date, and the only thing I got right was the day. Uh, <laughs> um, not the year. I actually got the month and the year wrong. <laughs> um, so she was born on June. 18th, oh. 1978. Oh my God. July. Or July. <laughs> oh, you know, ding -dong. I put June in. It was supposed to be July. You just said June. Did oh, I say June? You said June. Yeah. Is that, is that on, can we cut that out? Can Nine we back years, it up a guys. little bit? We could cut it. <laughs> oh, dude. You oh, can make Sean. up for it. <laughs> Sean, you Smartest cut that. man I've ever met and also yet the dumbest. Sometimes. Do you know why? Because I'm clinically photographic. Now all I You've can see my is 06, 18. I saw the one that got written down. 06, 18. And then it says 2023. And then you, I know that's <laughs> You think? I think you're more than three. All right. If old. you get the anniversary date, it'll make up for it. Oh, God. He's never going to oh, get God. that either. February 3rd. 5th. <laughs> oh, what two. year, Sean? You're <laughs> never coming on this podcast again. <laughs> Knew I shouldn't come. <laughs> oh man! Knew this was a bad idea. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> moving on, moving, moving on, moving on to biohacking. <laughs> to biohacking. Let's move on to uh, to five G towers. Oh, yeah. oh, five G towers. That's a fun um, topic, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, there's a really great website uh, called Antenna Search. Dot com. You can go to antennasearch.com if you're listening to this, and you can put in your zip code, and it will tell you how many 5G towers, um, Wi-Fi towers, are within a radius um, of where you are located that could interfere with cellular energy. You know, if you look at now the, the study of frequency medicine, I mean, we, we know that the body is just a giant ball mm -hmm. of frequency, right? Emotional states have direct impact on cellular function. You know, the surface of our cells communicate with their outside environment through frequency, and I don't think that the final shoe is dropped on 5G. And this is another one that I tell people, you know, use your phone on speakerphone, um, get a corded headset. Mm -hmm. um, and now some of these headsets are so powerful with RF frequency going through the brain because they don't just communicate with the phone, they actually communicate with each other. Mm. You know, if you've ever used an iPhone ear pod, you know, if you take one out, it shuts off. Right. I mean, it, it's not doing that through the communication with the phone, it's doing that with the communication through the brain. Right, so they're, and and now you can be three hundred feet from your phone. Mm -hmm. So the amount of RF frequency at that distance is very, very, very powerful. So, you know, my preference for, you know, to protect yourself against five G is just get a corded headset, use your phone on speakerphone as much yeah. as possible. I mean, France just banned them, the latest version of the iPhone. I think iPhone is making some adjustments to that. Yeah. Some um, countries just banned some iPhone models I saw too. Yeah, yeah France was the first one to ban um, the latest version of the iPhone because of the amount of EMF frequency Jeez. coming out of it. Nuts. It's yeah. mind numbing. If you go right into the settings of your phone, you go to, gen you go to settings, general, um, and and, and then there's and then there's another drop down. I can't recall what it, what it is, but um, it will it will actually show you and warn you not to put the phone to your head. Um, oh my god! It says that, he, that it was tested um, ten to twelve inches from the body, and Jeez. they recommend using it ten to twelve inches. Well, ten to twelve inches, you know, you have to be on speakerphone yeah. or a corded headset to do that. Wow. So what exactly is it doing? The radiation doing to the body? So if you think about um, frequency in general, so there's a there's a concept in physics there's a law in physics it's called constructive interference mm -hmm. it says that if two frequencies of equal wavelength meet the size of the frequency doubles and then there's an opposite law uh, in physics that's called destructive interference it says if two frequencies of opposite wavelength meet they cancel out so if you match the frequency of a cell you can either amplify its activity or you can cancel its activity. When you start to cancel the activity of a cell, like what's called the ion channel, which is, if you think of a cell as a kind of like a tennis ball, and it actually has a 
membrane that's protecting it and it's two layers so called a phospholipid bilayer by being two mm -hmm. there's an outside layer and an inside layer so things leave the cell and enter the cell through these channels right the little yeah. ports um they're they're called ion channels and so for something to enter a cell or leave a cell to eliminate waste repair detoxify regenerate these ion channels have to be functioning perfectly well, 5g frequency matches uh the frequency of some of these ion channels that's the best way that I can explain it. Mm -hmm. So now you're interrupting cellular respiration. You're wow. interu interrupting cellular activity, meaning you're impeding that cell's capacity to eliminate waste, repair, detoxify, regenerate, to divide. And when you do that, um, especially in the proximity of where you hold the phone, um, and then you see things like trigeminal neuralgias um, in one of the cranial nerves, you see um, an increased risk for you know um, all forms of, of brain cancer. Um, there's been a parabolic rise in, mm -hmm. in in brain cancer. Some people directly relate it to cell phone Dang, usage. Dang, I didn't know that. Um, I think I in 10 years, we're going to look back 10, CBFX. 20 years and go, what in the <laughs> Why did we Yeah, we really moved on that. We're going back to like rotary phones with the <laughs> well, I mean, I, again, landline options. Yeah. You know, you don't want to fear monger, but the truth is if you can use a speakerphone or a corded headset, you, you, know, you can significantly mitigate your yeah. risk. Yeah, and EMF I just bought this EMF, anti-EMF chip too. Have you oh, seen yeah. these? Yeah, we have. That's actually a really good one. That's yeah, a company is. that um, um, is that LifeWave. Yeah, it was like sixty bucks, I think. Yeah, um, that's actually one where I read. I'm not saying the other ones don't work, but I read yeah. all of the clinical data on that and the clinical studies, and it's really interesting that scatter technology. Yeah, it really works, and it diffuses the um, the EMF not only when you're on a call, but all the time. Yeah, so you said you I can sleep next to it now too. Yeah, you can sleep next to it now. Yeah, I've read too that it has a lot to do with sperm count that men's sperm count is going lower because it's affecting their fertility because they put it if you put it in your front pocket, in your pocket or, yeah. Yeah, yeah that it's better to keep it in your back pocket is that also true yeah well follicular cells and so if you think of the testicle as kind of like a yin and yang symbol mm -hmm. um you know one side produces sperm um, and those are governed by what's called follicular follicular cells and then the other side produces luteal cells that produce testosterone so the same organ produces testosterone and 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 sperm and the spermatogenesis this production of sperm and, and something called meiosis the the division of cells in cells specifically in the testicles are highly 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 susceptible to radiation to frequency um so when we carry them in our pocket you know next to our groin we're actually you know directing that radiation to our scrotum which can be have a negative effect on sperm wow. what about females if we put it near our you know, that's Over interesting. Either. I don't know that I've I've actually read a study on yeah. that, so I like to quote peer-reviewed data rather than just give my opinion, <laughs> so I'm really not. That's smart, because yeah. otherwise um, you'll get lambasted for it. <laughs> I get lambasted anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> what have you guys been seeing with this testosterone epidemic almost? It's dropping every year. Have you guys been seeing those results with all the tests you're seeing? A lot of young guys in their 20s, shockingly. Yeah, in their yeah. 20s? In their yeah. 20s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, you think about um, the amount of assault that our bodies take on a daily basis, just micro poisoning, um, pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, GMO foods. I'm, uh, you know, I said, if people could do one thing when they leave this podcast, stop drinking tap water, if they could do two things. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna require more. We'll be, at, we'll be at six by the end, but. Um, <laughs> but if they could do two things, uh, my second recommendation would be to stop eating GMO foods. Yeah. Um, the science is absolutely crystal clear now. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at 2009 when we really started the promulgation of, of genetically modified foods on a massive scale. You know, the, the studies were coming out saying this should be investigated. Um, there, there are animal model indications that um, this can have a negative effect on uh, cellular metabolism and specifically on your DNA. And by 2013, um, the studies were moving into human beings and they were saying, well, they're actually getting worse in, in human beings. There's actually some evidence that it has a negative effect on your immune system, on, on sperm counts in men and women. And um, and then by 2023, I've been pushing some of these studies out. Um, the evidence is crystal clear that GMO foods are a disaster for human beings because they demodified the seed, this genetically modified seed. Mm -hmm. um, they modified the seed to be resistant to glyphosate glyphosate and glyphosate is a is an, an insecticide and they realized when they were spraying the plants that it was also 
the seed. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. I mean, you want to the insects and not the seed. Right. And so they genetically modified the seed to be resistant to glyphosate. But when you genetically modify something, very often the body doesn't recognize it. Mm. Right? It's like a piece of plastic. It doesn't have an enzyme to break it down. Right. Largely the way that our body metabolizes things that enter our body or takes things and gets rid of waste is, is called a lock and key method. Right. So for every nutrient, there's an enzyme and these two kind of meet like like the missing pie slice from a Pac-Man, right? It fits and now there's a chemical reaction. But when you put things into the body that the body doesn't have an enzyme for, it does it doesn't recognize it. It's a non-metabolite, like a genetically modified food. Um, then not only are you not extracting nutrients from it, so you're not actually getting any nutrition, there's evidence now that these genetically modified foods can actually alter the human genome Jeez. and make us less, um, um, and make make us resistant to antibiotics. Ooh. Um, if you'd like, if you if you'll remind me, I'll actually put that study link in, yeah. in the podcast yeah, so let's people link it can so people can't deny it. Oh yeah, because they'll deny it. But yeah, it, yeah no, but, it, but we got a lot of hate for that have, fruit one. Oh, I know, <laughs> I got a lot of hate. For fruit. I should publish the fruit one. Too. <laughs> that was that was. Uh, um, EWG uh, published that, you know, where they, um, it, that one went really viral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, essentially what they did was they put non-organic, I said inorganic, so let me correct that by saying non-organic fruit in a commercial press. And they measured the pesticide level of the juice from the non-organic fruit. And they realized that the pesticide content was high enough that they could actually take that juice and respray the crop. Mm -hmm. Now, whether they did or not, I don't know. But the point is that the amount of pesticide in, in non-organic fruit um, was so high they could respray the crop. I mean, that's just a fact. That's I mean, scary. Yeah, that's so, scary. Um, that's why I said the 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 idea there is to just try to eat organic fruits. So right. Fruits absorb nutrients through their skin. They draw it into the the fruit, and then it makes sense that if you liquefy that. Um, that you still get the pesticide content. You know, it, it's, it's like when we blend fruits, right? You, you in, in some cases, you quadruple the glycemic index. Mm -hmm. So the difference between eating a banana and blending a banana is it raises your, your uh, blood sugar at four times the rate. Oh, if you drink it? If you drink it, if you blend wow. it. So that's why you always tell me not to add bananas to my shake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. It tastes or, so or, good or, in the or shake. It does, for that matter. Just... just <laughs> Drink the shake, eat the berries. Drink the shake, eat the banana. Yeah. But to blend the banana, you're 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 going to skyrocket your sugar. And a lot of times, it's actually, it's not the um, sugar itself. It's the rate at which it raises your blood sugar. Mm. So the glycemic index is kind of a measure of how fast does this have an effect on blood sugar. Right. So, you know, a blended banana will raise your blood sugar faster than a teaspoon of straight table sugar. What yeah. about my banana bread? I'm just kidding. That's the, that's the best. <laughs> but I saw a clip. Uh, you don't eat white rice because of the high GI, right? Right. So you don't eat sushi or anything? I mean, I, I eat sashimi. Sashimi. Um, and once in a while, I'll have a uh, piece of rice with it. Um, but uh, rice is pretty high on it. Yeah. You gave it up to white rice? Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Unless I know for sure it doesn't have folic acid in it. Okay. Because otherwise it'll just keep me up at night. My brain will just spin out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you see keeping people up at night? A lot of people struggle sleeping. Is that mainly diet? Yes, very much diet related. So if you if you have an MTHFR gene, which we've talked about before, you, you are basically allergic. You cannot convert folic acid into 5-methylfolate. Right. So you just have to go to 5-methylfolate. But... The problem is that rice, breads, pastas, you know, crackers, <clears throat> cookies, all the good stuff, all the carbs, <laughs> most of them, if they're not organic or imported, have been sprayed with folic acid. Yeah. And we call it fortified or enriched. Yeah, so right. cereal, Cheerios cereal has got, you know, it's, it's yeah. enhanced with vitamins and minerals, but not everybody can process those vitamins and cheap minerals. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I remember when I got my results back and I had that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used to get sick a lot, like monthly. And it was yeah. all because I was eating those foods, I think. Yeah. I haven't yeah. been sick since we last met. Dude, that's awesome, Dude. man. Love it. Yeah, it's, it's been great. nine months, haven't been sick. Amazing. That's That's crazy. I yeah. mean, that's, it's not it's not at all surprising, but. Um, We're actually writing a book about it right now. Yeah. All about just people's stories like that. And, and I sent out, I'll actually send you a list of questions if you want to participate. Yeah. Sent out a list to, you know, 50 patients of ours and just said, hey, would you mind sharing your story? I knew you had a great experience with the genetic test and getting on the right protocol and changing <clears throat> your diet. Would you mind contributing to the story? And 
I've been in tears all weekend. Like, wow. So I, she really has. I, I mean, really she's have. shown me these stories and like, it's oh like my a gosh, look whole at like, new level you guys are changing millions of, of lives. Inspiration it, it feels so good. It yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. And kids like teaching their kids how to make better food choices. Mm -hmm. One, one story was about a kid who, the, you know, these twin girls, they go to a soccer game and they're offered pizza and cookies. <laughs> And they were like, no, we're good. The so <laughs> last time we ate pizza and cookies, then we couldn't play the game right. because they were so like weighed down and their their minds couldn't focus and they didn't have any energy. It sucked the life out of them. Mm. So I love that then the next game that they went to, they were like, no, we'll just get some orange slices. You know, these are nine year olds, like yeah. making good decisions. Yeah. You don't know better at that age. You're just eating whatever your parents give you. Exactly. Yeah. You're eating what your parents give you. I mean, and if you think of a standard American diet, like what do we feed kids before they go off to school? Pop tarts, white bagels, cereal. And, you know, when you're when you're pulling this stuff off the grocery shelf, if you're unaware, it says, well, this is fortified mm -hmm. uh, bleached white flour or it's enriched whole grains. And the, the terms fortified or enriched just means they sound good. Spray, yeah. yeah, they sound great. Um, you know, if you're a parent and something was fortified and something wasn't, you'd probably pick the fortified right. or the enriched version because it sounds like maybe they added something really good to it. But the truth is, it just means it's sprayed with folic acid. And a lot of children, 44 percent of them, can't metabolize that so it just makes their little minds race mm. and then parents are like why is it a full contact sport to get my kid in the car to go to school in the morning <laughs> yeah. um and you know and then the, then the school's and calling home and, saying, and meltdowns yeah, little johnny and... can't pay attention he doesn't follow directions he doesn't complete assignments and he's disruptive so they want to bring in the ritalin to kind of solve those issues mm. really if you strip folic acid out of their diet um, which, by the way, is a, an entirely man-made chemical. Let's just be clear. Completely folic acid is not a yeah. vitamin. You can't find folic acid anywhere on the surface of the earth, right? It does not occur naturally in nature. Contrary to popular belief, folate it does, but folic acid doesn't. And if you just switch up those food sources, so a lot of times it's not just about the fear-mongering of cereal's going to kill you, bagels are going to kill you, Pop-Tarts are going to kill you. If you get the organic version of those um, or the non-fortified, non-enriched versions, why people can go to Italy and have a bowl of pasta or you can walk down the Champs-Elysees in Paris and, and eat a baguette and you don't Fine. feel like right, right? Because, um, because it's not, well, first of all, it's not laden with seed oils, but it also is not sprayed with folic acid. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, over there in Europe, they have something called day old bread. It's because at the end of the day, it's it's no longer good. It starts to harden. Yeah, it's fifty percent um, off. You know, I mean, here you could put a loaf of white bread on the counter and eat it in thirty days. Mm, wonder uh, bread. Uh, <laughs> gross. So, I mean, that right there should tell you like yeah. it's got stuff in it that's very unnatural. How many meals per day are you guys eating? Two. Um, yeah, two. I usually two. eat my I usually eat my first meal at noon, my last meal by six o'clock. So you're intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. Nice. During that time. And and just a quick bout on intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is not for everybody. Right. Um, it's for people that have, <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of the worst endocrine disasters we've ever seen are in young females with a very tight feeding window um, because it can really affect their menstrual cycle. And at different times during the month, um, you know, they're because of their hormonal cycle, the follicular, the ovulation, the luteal, um, it's it's not good for them to intermittent fast. It actually causes the pituitary to believe that the body is starving and throttle back their metabolism. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people that are considering intermittent fasting, if they really want to find out if it's good for them, do a quick blood test. Um, look at something called your hemoglobin A1C. It's a fancy way of saying the three-month average of your blood sugar. If it's high, then you're a candidate for intermittent fasting, especially if you have high insulin. If it's very, very low, mm -hmm. if you are on average hypoglycemic, meaning you're on average, your hemoglobin A1C is, is 5.1 or less, you are definitely not a candidate for intermittent fasting, mm. right? You'll slow your metabolism way, way, way down. And for young females, menstruating females, it could be an endocrine disaster. And that's where mm -hmm. we recommend people wake up, have a protein shake, even if you're not a uh, morning eater like i'm not a morning eater but i have to have a protein shake in the morning yeah um right I yes yeah i'm correct on that <laughs> yeah okay well, and then and i'll have a protein, protein shake and i'll put collagen in my coffee and so i at least have like 20 30 grams of protein in the morning nice and then that gets me to noon or one when i'm kind of more like hungry i yeah. just don't wake up hungry <clears throat> Yeah, I see a lot of debate about how many grams of protein and the best proteins you should be eating have you mm -hmm. seen any studies on this Oh, no question. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. But <laughs> in every clinical study that I have ever read 
um, hands down animal protein beats plant plant based protein for mm. performance that, that that I've read. Um, and if somebody has a study they'd like me to consider, I'd be more than happy to read it. I'm not taking an opinion on that. That's just based on 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 what I've read. Whey protein outperforms plant based proteins um, in athletic performance. But the the issue again is. Um, not whether you're vegan, vegetarian, carnivore, keto, paleo, um, raw food, what have you. It's the it's the distance from the food to the table. It's the quality of the food source. Mm. I mean, some of the sickest clients we've ever had have been raw food vegans. Vegan. Some of the sickest <laughs> clients time. we've ever had yeah. have been meat eaters. Every time. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've seen more vegans. Well, way, way more vegans. Yeah. But, but um, and it's not to attack the vegan lifestyle or attack the vegan diet. It's that, you know, um, you know, vegans can have beer. They can have pasta. They can have rice they can have bread they can they can have all kinds of of things that other diets would omit lots mm -hmm. of grains and these are places where you find very very high levels of pesticides herbicides insecticides and preservatives and folic acid and, folic right. acid. <laughs> and so, so then their guts are all messed up or their mm. brains are spinning out yeah and they don't realize why the only person i've seen it done right is brian johnson yeah he's like the only vegan i know that pulled it off yeah and if you look at brian johnson i mean they they Brian Johnson's done something that's virtually impossible to do, and he's removed himself from the equation, mm. right? I mean, so Brian Johnson does not decide what he eats, what he drinks, what he supplements with, when he goes to bed, when he wakes up, nothing. He has completely removed personal choice from his regimen. Everything is dictated by data. right? And so um, his supplements have to fight for their life to make it into his supplement routine. 111 supplements. Yeah. Holy I think no. that's too many. It's crazy. Personally. Yeah, that's I was up to like 40 and I was like, this is, this is too 40 much. 40 is a lot too. Yeah. It, but, but see, that's, that's where our argument is that people are supplementing just for the sake of supplementing, not right. necessarily because that those 40 capsules are what you actually need. Yeah. So if you get a, you know, a good roadmap by doing the blood and genetics, you really can narrow it down to what your body actually right. requires. I'm a big believer in supplementing for deficiency, not just the sake of supplementing. So if you have a deficiency, if you and you know that, then supplementing for deficiency is when real magic happens mm -hmm. in the human body, right? I mean, human beings, most of us are not thriving because we're deficient in certain raw materials, not because we have some kind of pathology or disease. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, most people, probably most of the people listening to this podcast are walking around right now at about 60% of their true state of normal. It's like you, you used to get, you know, sick, I had a very, bunch of deficiencies, often. yeah. And when um, I took the test, so once you once you fix those deficiencies, now you just take those little anchors off of your stern. You just pull them up, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so now you're not getting sick as often. Um, and so many people listening to this either have brain fog or weight gain or water retention or poor sleep or lack of focus and concentration or poor yep. short term recall or no waking energy, and they just chalked it up to a consequence of aging. They just said that's a consequence of. Of, that is of aging. the biggest response I got back is that people thought, oh, well, I'm 40. I'm in my 40s. I'm in my 50s. This is what, how you're supposed to feel. Right. Including one of our friends who's a doctor. Wow. And he even was like, I thought this was normal. I figured I was, you know, couldn't focus at work. I, you know, had like symptoms of ADHD. I just had mm -hmm. brain fog. I thought it was just because I turned 51. Like, yeah. Look what you guys did to Dana White. Yeah. He has yeah. a six pack now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. yeah. And he's on Bad. no medication. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. He yeah. used to be like what thirty percent body fat? Yeah, thirty yeah. percent body fat. Very Feels heavy. amazing, and it's it's all these are real stories from real people, and I I just love it. I love you know hearing back from people that I knew they felt good, but hearing the details of how they feel and how we've really changed their lives with simple stuff. Yeah, I mean it's not expensive. Yeah. No, it's not that complicated. It's not <laughs> no. that complicated. You take a blood test and then fix the deficiencies. Take a blood test and a genetic test and the genetic test you do once in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that is an absolute must. I mean because you do that test once in your life and you'll never guess again mm -hmm. on what your body's deficient in. Well, here's a sad story too. I got I was communicating with a guy on Instagram and last year he you know, watched enough of our videos and things and got the gene test done. Mm -hmm. Then he was feeling great. So I didn't really hear from him for a year, except for every once in a while, he'd pipe up and say he felt good. And then all of a sudden he was texting me like mad saying he was having two panic attacks a day. And I was like, okay, this is something that you knew that you just put in your, started putting in your body. Otherwise this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So I was like, tell me, send me pictures of everything you're taking and tell me what your diet is. So you sent the diet stuff over he was spot on he was following all the rules and regulations that we would put in his diet yeah. protocol but then he sent me photos of his stuff and the multivitamin that we had put together for him mm -hmm. 
that was working for a year, well, he ran out and got lazy, didn't reorder it, and he just hmm. went to Walmart and he picked up a normal multivitamin from there and it had a B12 that he can't have. He's basically allergic to cyanocobalamin, the synthetic form of B12 that mm -hmm. they put in so many multivitamins. And he was taking that for two weeks, having two panic panic attacks a day and suicidal thoughts. Just so from a multivitamin? From a multivitamin. Holy it was the B12 in it was 104,000% of his daily dose of B12. <laughs> yeah. oh so I remember God. on your podcast, the first one I did, I got yeah. lambasted for some, you know, saying, and then all of a sudden you take all these different things and can add up to 104 or 100% of your daily dose of B12. His was one 25 milligram B12 capsule, 104,000%. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And he's like, oh my God, I had no idea that that could make such a difference. And I was like, okay, go back to your notes, go to your paperwork that we talked about. And, you know, and he understood and he immediately threw it in the trash <clears throat> and reordered his supplements. And then he was fine. And he just literally said that I helped save his life. I mean, stuff like that just makes me. Wow. That's incredible. I, and there's a lot of people out there taking crying. multivitamins that probably have no idea. Mm -hmm. No idea. Yep. Yeah, popping syndrome. And a lot are, are and absorbable, and they use the cyanide-based form of B12, and they use you know folic acid, which is another. You'll never convince me that a nutrient that we make in a laboratory, that we synthesize in a laboratory, that you couldn't even find on the surface of the earth before the mid '90s, is somehow the key to optimal health. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, because you know chemicals, synthetics, pharmaceuticals are, are rarely, if ever and the key to being optimal. They right. may be the key to an acute issue that you're facing at that moment, inflammatory issue or what have you, but they're not the key to, to longevity. It's like yeah. when you laugh about the the random berry that's found in the Amazon. And oh, the new superfood? Yeah, yeah the new superfood. Like food. the newest yeah. thing. And yeah. Only one company's patented it. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember growing up, they said kale was a superfood, and now they just found out it's not even that good for you. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, terrible no, for you. that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. My daughter's kale really and disappointed. Kale and a lot of the vegetables with oxalates in them. Because, you know, vegetables are trying to protect themselves from predators, too. I right. mean, just because they don't have teeth and claws doesn't mean that they actually don't have mechanisms to protect themselves and um you know animals learn over time that if you eat that you will not di digest it and um and that's going to be very bad you know the first time alina ever ate kale she was four years old my daughter mm -hmm. and she loved it so much she's she doesn't really like fruit but she loves vegetables yeah. she's just a total opposite kid and she wolfed down a whole thing of <laughs> kale, like a whole stock of it, mm. and broke out in hives for Ooh, the first really? time. I we she had never had an allergic reaction to anything, and they told me it was because it was a superfood, and it was like too overwhelming <laughs> for her little body. Oh my god, that's funny. <clears throat> it's the best. So maybe that's just BS, but um, she can eat it now. She's been fine ever since. I'm like, just don't eat a whole bushel of it. <laughs> yeah, but man, I, didn't I used to I dominate it. those kale chips, and I used to think it was healthy. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, they're oh, not. No. Yeah, the funny thing is most of those kale chips are fried in seed oils. Yeah. If you look at them, they're I like, know. it says palm oil um, or canola oil yeah. or palm kernel oil. And Sunflower. Yeah, I got, make I got it sound healthy. All over Instagram for talking about seed oils. And I never really said that seed oils were bad. What I said was industrial process seed oils right. were bad. Right. If you take a canola plant and you put it in a commercial press and it comes out gummy and then you degum it with hexane. Mm -hmm. which is a known neurotoxin. And then you take that hexane degummed oil and you heat it to 405 degrees, um, which turns it rancid, mm -hmm. um, putrefies it. Um, and then you deodorize that rancid oil with sodium hydroxide, which is a very known, a well-known carcinogen. Um, and then in some cases take the deodorized rancid <laughs> cytotoxic seed oil and then bleach it with chlorine. Yeah. Um, and then bottle it and then put it on the shelf. Now that's terrible for you. Yeah. And um, I'd be happy to debate the fact checker that said that seed oils are. You got fact check on that. I got fact check. Somebody's going to say right you're now, wrong. It's got a little cloud over it and it yeah. says false information. And then you click see why and it says fact checkers say. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've gotten Seed oils are not bad for human beings. I go, what fact checker? Yeah. I, like, where is this person? Yeah. I mean, um, they got money to just throw stuff at you. Those yeah. big food companies. Yeah. yeah the exactly. funniest one was I got fact checked for. Um, I, I got cited for false information by the the cdc site that i took the clip so you from. got the clip from I, yeah because <laughs> i was so afraid of it wow. being censored yeah. i cut it i and then i just pasted it on instagram that's it i didn't even write a narrative i yeah. just cut it and pasted it and then it was like what false information sage um, got one higher level than that we couldn't even see one of our videos i think yep 
You uh-huh. have to say, I, I want to watch this, right? Yeah, you have to say you want to watch it. I think that one had to do with the B12 we were talking about. Oh, no, no, right. it was the folic acid one. It was about breads. Right. Oh, breads, yeah. yeah it was she bread went one. after white bread and, yeah. People were mad. And it's not all bread. Sourdough bread's great for you. I mean, um, again, if, you, if, if, if you're listening to this podcast and you've traveled, right, especially to Europe, Italy, um, and you and you've realized, you know, when I'm overseas, I'm I I feel better. I <laughs> eat, I ate pasta. I ate um, you know, olive oil. I mean, you know, I went to Italy and I ate in this small restaurant and I had a bowl full of pasta. I had bread before I had dinner. I had red wine. I had sounds um, amazing. Sounds yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do that here. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, I had olive oil and I felt freaking amazing. And then I'd, you go and you try to do the same thing here. Yeah. And you, oh, you know, God, you walk died. out of Buca de Pepe's or, or you know olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't even get into your car. No, yeah. exactly. You know? Do you think they'll ever fix it? I see they're banning certain candies now and stuff. Yeah, red food dye in some California. Of the food I applaud California for yeah, that. Yeah, good job, California. Yeah, yeah who would have thought Cali right. would have been the yeah. state to do it? Uh, yeah. It doesn't surprise me. Cali does ban a lot of stuff. Oh, really? They finally banned something that makes sense. Okay. Well, they banned okay. peptides and now. Oh, they like banned the peptides? FDA. An injectable glutathione. But those are good, which I thought. makes me laugh. Oh, they are yeah. good. They're good yeah. for you. So yeah, why they um, banned peptides? They banned a huge class of peptides recently for, not for. Um, safety concerns or not because of reports of actual harm or injury, but because of a, you know, quote unquote, lack of safety data. Hmm. And, um, you know, peptides are amino acid sequences and mm-hmm. the ones under 44 chains are, are considered extraordinarily safe. I don't know that there's, um, you know, incidences of people like showing up in the ER because they took a peptide like a yeah. BPC-157 or a growth hormone peptide or any number of other peptides that people use for weight loss like AOD-9604 or MOTC. Um, and and yet they just came out and, and, and banned them, not because of safety concerns, but because of a lack of safety wow. data. Well, I've heard great things about them. Peptides are amazing. BPC-157 is a healing peptide. It right. can seal the inner lining of the gut. So for somebody that has a lot of gut problems, we usually, that's part of their protocol. Mm-hmm. And then it also can help hear, heal if you've just had surgery or you have a joint issue or muscle tear or um, a number of things. Yeah. And so we have a lot of patients that take BPC-157, including myself, including my daughter after she, you know, injured herself playing lacrosse. Mm-hmm. It's perfectly safe. They banned it. So they banned those, but s- you could get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, painkillers. Painkillers, uh, opioids. Yep. Yep. You, yeah. can get, you can definitely get narcotics, yep. antipsychotics. FDA is get all about those. <laughs> but you can't yeah. get. And another concerning thing. Adderall to your kid. Yeah, right. Another concerning thing I've seen you talk about is misdiagnosis. Is, yeah. Yeah. And it's well, the third leading cause of death in America. Yeah, I mean, in 2016, there was a Harvard study uh, done. I think they actually, I think the study was initially commissioned for, um, uh, for Medicare and Medicaid because they wanted to see, you know, what are the leading causes of mortality and, you know, what can we do to curtail some of these diseases? Um, and they realized that medical error was actually the third leading cause of death or what we call iatrogenic illness. And it's one thing when you realize, well, modern medicine and medical error are the third leading cause of death, but they're the third leading cause of death in the industry designed to prevent death <laughs> like, may, like if you switch that to any other industry it'd be laughable yeah right i mean <laughs> like if you had a you know your podcast was the third leading cause of career failure <laughs> you're like hey do you guys want to come on and listen to my success you know but nope. um, you know two-thirds of the time people go bankrupt immediately after my podcast so, you know, I, I don't think people will be lining up yeah. right if we applied it to any other industry if you sold security systems and said hey but i'm the third leading cause of home invasion <laughs> um but you know when you when you think that modern medicine more people than morbid obesity and diabetes combined um only cardiovascular disease and cancer people than medical error um then you realize that we're really good at crisis prevention mm-hmm. we're not very good at bio optimization and um and i hate to come in and just attack big pharma and attack the medical community because 99 percent of doctors got into medicine to help people and they're right. doing a great job and um and and big pharma actually does a lot of good for us too but in the effort to make a profit you're not in the, in the business of losing clients it's not aligned right so it's very yeah it's not aligned um you know if you owned an airline you wouldn't you wouldn't invest in a marketing campaign to sell fewer seats. Mm-hmm. So you're not likely going to invest in something that's going to um, cause you to lose a client, which means that you cure their disease, which is right. why the majority of clinical trials are designed to manage disease, 
Mm -hmm. right? I mean, if you look at diabetes in the United States alone, it's a $110 billion annual industry. So how about cancer? There, I know that there has to be better cures for cancer, but they're not going to go advertise that. Mm -hmm. They've been trying to find a cure for forever. Yeah. There's definitely cures. Well, yeah. I mean, it's There's a definitely cellular... more natural ways right. to do it, I think. And I'm and I'm not going to speak on it because I don't know those ways. But I just know there's got to be better things out there than just yeah. chemo and radiation that just basically almost take you to death before it yep. brings you back alive. And you got to pay six figures for that. Oh, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So and that's you have a to business. follow the protocol because if you don't have the money to go outside of the sequence that's prescribed to you, you have no choice. Right. Um, so... You know, you can't you you you're not eligible for certain medication until you've taken a sequence of of steps, and that sequence of steps very often can can. <laughs> and um, and again, it's not to say that oncologists are out there trying to harm the public. I don't think that that's true at all. I don't think there's any sinister motive in in the medical community. But the way that medicine is designed, it's really not designed to get rid of disease. It's really designed to manage Manage disease. Band-aid solutions. Very good at disease management. And if you can get somebody to subscribe to the fact that they have a disease, you can get them to subscribe to a lifetime of medication. I mean, most even antidepressants were originally designed to to be prescribed for 90 days or less. We talk to people all the time that are on them for 15 or 18 years. Jeez. Mm -hmm. I mean, my first question is always, when when did you think it was going to kick in? When (laughs) did you think it was going to work? Yeah. Yeah. You're you're 18, you're like, okay, let's give it another two years (laughs) and and then things should sort of level out, right? That's scary. Are there any countries you think have a good health system, like they're doing it right? Well, a lot of countries that actually have, so if you think about the United States, we're the number one spender worldwide. In healthcare, we 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 spend trillions of dollars more than and than any other country. Wow. We're ranked um, uh, 52nd in the world in terms of our quality of care. We're ranked 50, 39th in the world for life expectancy. Hmm. So we know that healthcare spending doesn't correlate to life expectancy, and it doesn't correlate to optimal health. If you look at our rates of obesity, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and what we would call mental illness, ADD, ADHD, OCD, manic depression, bipolar, autism, um, we have skyrocketing rates of these conditions. I mean, autism in the 60s was one in 5,000 mm-hmm. children. Now it's one in 32 children. You serious? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what we were talking about before the birthday thing. I We did not have friends that were autistic. There was no one in my any of my schools that was growing up. In the entire school? No not one? in the entire school. Wow. I, and now I, I remember kids that had Down syndrome, mm-hmm. but definitely not autism. Right. And hopefully nobody sees this and goes, Sage, why don't you remember so-and-so? <laughs> if, you're, um, if you're an eighth grade kid today, but, you probably have you know, half a dozen kids with autism. That's crazy. Depending on where they are on the spectrum. And those neuroinflammatory diseases come from all kinds of things. Now there's whole classrooms, my daughter said. There's just dedicated to kids. To autism? That have severe autism. Oh my gosh. It's sad. That's crazy. There's got to be a better way. Yeah. Because at this rate, it's going to be even higher percentages every year. Well, I mean, if you think about the rate that it had to compound to get there, I mean, first it was one in 5,000, one in 2,500, then one in 1,000, then... One in a hundred, and I think the twenty sixteen. It's like one in numbers, thirty-two. One I think. in thirty-two. So you have a three percent chance now if you have a kid that they'll be born with autism. Yeah, mm-hmm. and more in boys than girls. I don't know why that is. Yeah, but more in boys than girls, and mm. I don't know. There's, I, I still think it. A lot of it stems back to, okay, my daughter. She had all her when she was little. I did space them out, and I think I told them not to throw in a couple. Right. But it is like a third now. She had a third of what they recommend now. Wow. And she's 15. So 15 years ago, there were way, way, way less acquired. Yeah. Now it's remember. up in the 70s. Yeah, I, I don't remember getting that many. Yeah. There's 72 now. There's 72 now? 72. All yes. the recommended And she only had, she was in the <laughs> 72, right? 72. Yeah. Can you Just imagine? to go to school? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And sometimes you're mandatory. And, and if you look at a lot of these, like tetanus, I don't think that there's been a reported case of tetanus in a in an under three-year-old child um, um, that caused, you know, uh, m- mortality that, that that led to a death um, ever. Mm-hmm. And I mean, most of these these tetanus cases and the, and the mortality from tetanus is in the 75 and older community and one in 1,000 of those result in, in a death in the actual known cases. Mm-hmm. So in the informed consent, we should say, listen, no child's ever died of this, but we still want you to vaccinate your child before three years old 
for a condition that has no statistical risk of mortality mm. seems seems kind of Excessive strange risk. to me. You know, I mean, even when I the thought tennis was, was just like you step on a rusty nail. I mean, yeah. Well, it is, yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, so why would a baby need a tennis shot? Yeah, I, mean, I haven't heard before they're three years old. Oh, Jesus. I, yeah. I don't know anyone that got that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, know any. Well, well, I do now. I know parents that who's who's. I actually kids get these. Got b suckered into one last year, but that was because we lost two homes in a hurricane, and mm -hmm. we were gutting, and there was just so much gross stuff that we were pulling out of these two houses. Yeah, throwing it on the side of the road, and I got a little panicked, and they were giving away free tetanus shots, and I. Oh, you got one! I got <laughs> oh, no. so freaked out. It, well, well, he didn't yeah. tell me. This is I oh, blame gosh. him. Oh, I, you didn't give him a I, heads up. He didn't. Uh, I wish he would have stopped I me. The shit out of him. He like, yeah, oh, really afterwards that didn't that. do me yeah. any good. I'm gonna die. I mean, but I felt like the expectancy chart. Like, I was. I was worried. <laughs> I was worried that I like had the rusty nail or something. I don't oh know, no! That I had stepped in it. <laughs> but now there's supplements you could take to treat the effects from, right? Yeah, nanokinase, um, bromelain, thymulin, um, mm -hmm. that will actually help to pull that spike protein um, if you have it out of the, out of the uh, you know the lining of the blood vessel. Yeah, because you know we used to use a lot of what was called attenuated viruses, um, which is where you take a uh, a virus and it has a they call it an envelope. It has a sort of a capsule around it, right? It has the DNA inside, and they used to go in and and extract more um, DNA so that the the envelope of the virus was there, the nucleocapsid protein was there, and you could put that into the body and it would solicit an immune response, but it wouldn't infect you. Mm -hmm. um, and now we've progressed to mRNA, which are messenger RNA. And if you think about what messenger RNA is, it's kind of like if you went into the cell and you went into the nucleus of the cell and you found the DNA, which is the boss, right? Mm -hmm. It's the CEO. Um, so the DNA is sitting in there running the show, and it basically has two functions. It, it makes a perfect copy of itself, right? And that's called replication. But it also sends instructions into the cell. So the, the, the DNA, the CEO, is sitting in the nucleus of the cell writing instructions into the cytoplasm of the cell, and these instructions are called messenger RNA. Mm -hmm. And normally a messenger RNA degrades in just a few hours, a few minutes to a few hours. So if I'm the DNA and you guys are the minions in the cell, <laughs> I would write you, a, I would say, hey, Go make this uh, protein. You go throw this nutrient out. You bring this nutrient in. Mm -hmm. You go make that protein. Um, so those mRNA sequences are really important for cellular communication. What we did when we created an mRNA vaccine was we created one from a we created a synthetic copy of that message. Mm -hmm. The problem was we we don't exactly know when that degrades, if ever. Mm. So now it's almost like an imposter stole the CEO's notepad and is writing instructions into the cell saying, hey, go make this protein. And then when you come back to your desk, go make this protein. Mm. You come back, go make this protein. But it doesn't go make stop. The protein. Go make the protein. Mm -hmm. And that repeated message to make a spike protein causes a massive rise in spike protein in the body. Wow. And when this gets out of the cytoplasm of the blood, it goes into the endothelial lining of the blood vessel. Yeah. And you know, we like to think that the skin is the largest organ in the body. I think that the lining of the blood vessel is because if you look at the surface area of the skin, it's about half a tennis court. If you look at the surface area of the endothelial lining of your blood vessel, it's like six tennis courts, mm. right? I mean, we have 63,000 miles of blood vessel in our body. What? So Damn. if you get an inflammatory condition in 63,000 miles of blood vessel, now nutrients can't leave the blood and enter the tissue, contents from the tissue can't leave the tissue waste and enter the blood. And once you interrupt that blood-brain barrier, this is where you start to have this strange myriad of symptoms, mm. right? Trigeminal neuralgias, transverse myelitis, myocarditis, pericarditis. You get um, all kinds of inflammatory conditions. You get mood numbness. You get um, issues with you know female hormonal patterns. And, and this is all because you've interrupted this exchange of nutrients between the blood and the tissue. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, stripping the spike protein out is is a very very positive thing and i uh, i think there actually is a published study on the on the nanokinase uh the bromelain and the thymulin um that you can use to absorb these spike proteins and actually drop your urine concentration of spike protein so that's wow. good news that's scary that it's doing that people have no idea about that yeah yeah but they and they they're just getting you know massive brain fog they're getting fatigue you know they're getting weight gain they're getting water retention they're getting strange muscle soreness or they'll be fine for a few days and then just have a day of just crushing fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, they get brain fog, like to the point where they just really can't think their way out of the house, not just getting a great idea in the bedroom and walking to the kitchen and kind of wondering what the heck you're doing in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, 
they're you know they're having processing issues yeah i used to get brain fog and low energy um but then i got on the supplements and it, it all went away pretty yeah. much yeah now it, non-stop it, working yeah oh, that's awesome, awesome. That's and i awesome. had no idea because that that's was my message normal we preach too is yeah like, you thought it was normal yeah, yeah. Well, why did you think it was normal because i got you're... used to it so yeah. i just thought it was normal to feel like that you know i'd wake up every morning kind of like not ready to go yeah. right and you know what's crazy is most people um even most people that are listening to this podcast, they're walking around at about 60% of their true state of normal. Yeah. They have no idea how good normal can feel. Till you find that raw material that's missing from your body and replace it, you have no idea how well things can function. You know, your gut health, your your short-term recall, you know, the the anxiety that you have, the anxiousness, you know, the sleeplessness. Most people that have sleep issues lay down body tired, but they, they can't go to sleep because their mind is awake. Mm -hmm. Right. And they they're laying there thinking about the most innocuous little thoughts and they can't get, shut their mind off. And then they're like, what the f am I thinking about my grocery list at two in the morning for? Yeah. Yeah. She's a he's like <laughs> snoring next to me. And I'm oh, just snore? going, have you actually, tried that, uh, I take just, it back. He doesn't snore anymore. I don't snore anymore. I used okay. to before used I to. started supplementing. Yeah. Before he was supplementing. Yeah. And was then like before I was supplementing, too, I was just yeah. wide I would awake. deny it. You would snore? She would video me. No, no. I'd just be wide awake, oh. like thinking about stupid stuff. And taking videotapes of me snoring. <laughs> yes, because he was making me. It, and and then I would blame you that I couldn't fall asleep because of your snoring. Yeah, but, that's that's relatable. Have you guys seen that mouth tape? <clears throat> yeah, I've used the hostage tape. Hostage tape. I just yeah. forget to tape, I forget yeah. to put it on. But the couple of times I've done it, I had a positive impact in my HRV, and I've actually looked up some studies. Um, it might have been anecdotal, but looked up some studies that it actually has a very positive effect on increasing your HRV, your heart rate variability. Wow. Um, if you give it to me, I'm happy mm -hmm. to slap it on your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You only use it when you're sleeping, babe. You can't give it to me during the day. Oh, oh. I thought it would help during the day, too. <laughs> <laughs> she loves the, uh, the sound of hostage tape. Yeah, hostage yeah. tape yeah, For her husband. It's a good name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, are your, uh, what are your lifespan goals? You want to hit a hundo? Oh, I'm already way over he, 100. He <laughs> wants to go to 120. Yeah. I, I have zero desire to go that high. Yeah. I'm no. trying to get her on board for 120. I'm not I don't taking want to care be alone. of you. Yeah, being I am alone not is taking less. care of you for 120. No, that's so many more years. I am not going <laughs> back into the nightclub business. I mean, um, I mean, back into You the, worked in nightclub? No, oh, I, mean, God, yeah. I mean, going out into the nightclubs <laughs> when I'm 110. Don't put me in that position, babe. Dude. I'm not. Oh, you're the nightclub <laughs> going. Okay, I see how it is. I have zero desire to, I don't know. I, my grandmothers lived like a wonderful life. They they passed at 90, 91. They okay. were healthy up until then. I'm I, that secretly seemed inching good. it higher Like for maybe 95, 100. But okay, then that's higher than was, last time we spoke. It was, yeah, it was 80 before, I believe. No, uh, bigger than 80, at least 90. Okay. But I don't want to be, here's the thing. What I saw from them is that they were sad because even though they were healthy and living longer than than they were living longer than their friends so every day it was like another funeral mm. and that made me sad got it. and then they also got bored they were right. just bored they've done so, studies on that when you retire you kind of well, i mean if you look at a lot of the blue zone studies and you'll see that sense of purpose yeah. um physical activity and sense of purpose were a big part of these um, blue zone studies, you know, in Sardinia, you know, um, interestingly in Sardinia, which is, they actually eat a very high carbohydrate diet. There was a, a very small area, very concentrated area of these hyper centenarians, these centenarians in a very small area of Sardinia. They were all over Sardinia, but in, the, in one particular um, neighborhood. area, mm -hmm. neighborhood, there was an exceptionally high a number of centenarians and they found the same link between other blue zones that they had this sense of purpose even if it was just gardening even if great grandma's idea was to just you know i mean our purpose was just to get the vegetables for dinner that mm. night um they went out into the garden they got vegetables they washed them they prepared them for the family every night you know they were they would um some of the men were still making belts and belt buckles and shoes and things well into their hundreds wow but they were all what i found walking fascinating walking was at 100 in sardinia the life expectancy um over age 100 was directly correlated to the slope of the hill really because so they walked to church and yeah, they because they the would market. walk up wow. these 40 walk, degree slopes and yeah. they go 10 blocks up to the church and then they go six blocks down to the market and then they go over to their house they, there were no such thing as elevators in their houses so yeah up and down the steps there's also no such thing as assisted care assisted oh, care living facilities oh assisted care yeah so like assisted care 
over there is you take mom and dad back into the house and you care for them until they pass. Right. And so they had a real communal sense. They had a real mm. sense of um, purpose. Mm. Um, they had a reason that, you know, to be there, they felt like people needed them. And I've, I found it really fascinating because it's something we inherently know, but now there's some science behind the fact that once you Why feel like you no longer have a purpose, um, and, you know, if you're in an assisted care living facility and you're playing cards with Beverly, who you don't even know, because her family doesn't come visit her, your family doesn't yeah. come visit you. I see those videos like, on social media. You're like, yeah, it's like, what's the purpose? To, you know, to play bridge and do puzzles until God yeah. decides it's my no, time. No, I'm definitely going to move my mom in because I don't want her to suffer like that in her final years. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going through that with my parents right now. You know, my, my, my father's handicapped and perfectly good cognitive function. My mom had bilateral knee replacements, and I've seen the impact on her cognitive function. And I've been very public about talking about it. And I'm actually going to document my journey with her over the next few months because I know so many people who have parents that are suffering from the same thing, and they're going through it right now, and they don't know, well, what can I do? to help my parents cognitive function. So I'm gonna lay out the peptide protocol that I have for her, you know, the the longevity protocol that I have for her. And I'm just gonna let people watch me go on this journey with my mom. Amazing. Um, That's inspiring, man. Um, are you digging your heel into me for a reason? Or is that- I don't mean like to. to <laughs> oh, no, okay. God no. No, it was just, well, I mean, you're snapping on my foot and it hurts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm just moved over here. No, don't go away, babe. This is why I don't wanna live to 120 <laughs> with him. <laughs> Is this your guys first episode together? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wait, no. Well, we've done I guess other ones. no first when we've been interviewed together. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Building that yeah. chemistry up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're building the chemistry. And you guys have your own show now. I want to end I off there. Know. Yeah, the Ultimate Human Podcast. I'm excited about it. Yeah. I think it's going to be fun. Cuz there's going to be a lot of there'll be a lot of episodes with us discussing topics that people want to know about. Like yeah. we'll, you know, throw it out to the social media world. Like what do you, what questions do you have for us that we can answer and we'll talk on different topics. I also want to share a lot of stuff about relationships and family mm. and the things that people can relate to, show, you know, how silly we can be and and how we've made it work for nine years without him knowing my birthday. Um, <laughs> and I have I, other redeeming qualities. <laughs> Maybe God. you should list some of those. <laughs> oh, you're man. very smart. Very smart. Yes, you are brilliant. There you make go. me laugh every day and you bring me coffee every morning and Thank that is wow. really the main reason that you're still around. <laughs> yeah, I'll take you're that. Uh, coffee yeah, every day. Morning. But yeah, he drives me crazy. I mean, just like every couple can be driven crazy by the other, but at the end of the day, we've like we've really worked hard to get to know one another, mm. and a lot of things have been improved by g us getting our diets right, diet nice. and supplementation. Oh my gosh, it's the crazy. Were a huge part of our relationship, and oh, yeah. actually, there was a book that we read when we were building our business. Yeah. Um, because you know we also built a business like we did everything you shouldn't do we built a house <laughs> together we raised a modern family you know some three of my kids one of one daughter's hers mm -hmm. um the whole family has now just gelled you know we have this amazing modern family her daughter's nice. like a daughter to me and my kids are like her own but you know anybody that says that you can build a business with your spouse and separate work from, from your <laughs> private life is completely lying to you. Right? If you have a bad For day at sure. the office, you're having a bad day at home. Yeah, exactly. If you have a great day at the office, you're having you a great, great day, day at home. home. Yeah, come but we you were, guys. you know, able to navigate that. And what what really worked for us was we found out that um, she's an integrator and I'm a visionary. And when you're a visionary, all you really care about is the vision and like all the cool things that you can do and all the cool neat ways that we can help people and all the like so many the, ideas the newest test and the newest thing that we should have and we can do this and we can do that and we can right. change the world and and then you have an integrator that's like very practical like well first of all who's going to buy this equipment mm. second of all who's going to run it mm -hmm. and third you know how are we going to implement this in our practice? And he never wanted to hear that, though. He just liked that he had thirty great ideas, and he would get so mad at me when I'd say, "You can pick three. Like, you <laughs> negative, Nancy. Three <laughs> ideas yeah. is something I can work with. You need but, someone like that, though. But you we, do. we we read a book called Rocket Fuel. Yeah. Okay. Um, who was the author of that? Um, please don't ask me that. I haven't heard that one. Rocket Fuel's it's called, great. It has an orange. It's cover. called Rocket Fuel. But okay. if you're a couple and you're in business together, this is a great book. Yes. I got to get that. It yes. really helps Excellent. me understand that all of my great ideas and all of this vision was worthless without somebody to implement it. Mm -hmm. And it also helped me understand that if we didn't have all these great ideas and this vision, that I had nothing to implement. There mm. was nothing, that I didn't have a job 
if he didn't have these great ideas because I wasn't coming up with it on my own. Right. So we we had to learn to appreciate each other that way instead of being resentful at one mm, another. Yeah. And then we really had to learn who this is my lane and this is your lane and please stay out of my lane and I'll stay out of <laughs> your lane. We respect it. And we Love really that, that yeah, changed I mean, our relationship that's tremendously. When things took, took off, off for the company and yeah. and for our relationship and for our family and for the level of patient satisfaction in our patient Amazing. community. You know, I'm gonna we get went that book from, for sure. Cause that was a great book and that combined with us figuring out the methylation piece the and getting him on the vitamins to calm him down a little bit, <laughs> getting on the vitamins to calm me down a little bit. I mean, it's it really is like a personality yeah. test and it yeah. helped us understand each other in that way as well. Really, I mean, so. it's like the tension just came right out of the balloon. It's amazing. amazing. And we can tell if the other one has not had their vitamins. She right. says it to me every day. She's every like, day. have you had your vitamins? <laughs> yeah. I just hold them out and I'm like, Shh, take, put these in your mouth. And if I'm not with him, I call. She calls my assistant. Oh, that's funny. Put sure them literally too. physically, throw them into his mouth. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, it's been a blast. Anything Dude, this wanna is awesome off with yeah, yeah. well um you know we're we're first of all thanks for having us again Absolutely. and we're really happy about the launch of the ultimate human podcast it actually launches tomorrow with dana white let's uh, go i know and Exciting. you know my my heroes are phds and researchers and mds that are in the field of anti-aging and longevity and biohacking so that's something that floats your boat tune into the ultimate human podcast. yeah a lot of guests that have, will share their stories mm -hmm. we'd love to have you on if yeah you want yeah to. let's have to share on. your yeah. story for sure i'd love um, to have you on. just the more that we can talk about health and wellness and and you know i love this concept of building generational health mm. right that's cool like it i love that we talk about Teach a lot of mental and fitness and not mental yes. illness you yeah know, um stuff yeah all right but check you. out their podcast guys thanks so much for coming on thank you brother thank you Crazy all right i'll see you guys next time peace <laughs>